Hey, younger fans, you know what time it is. I'm Taylor Strecker, and it's time to go way behind the scenes of tonight's episode and into the homes of Younger's cast and writers from my living room to yours. This is your Getting Younger After Show. In tonight's episode, Millennial Goes Unbranded, Redmond brought Liza a snack, and Quinn introduced everyone to the F word, but not the one you're thinking about. Here to get into all that and more with me is tonight's super special guest, Hilary Duff. Hi, honey. Hi, how are you? I'm good. How's that baby cooking? You know, we're getting there. We're getting there. You look adorable. I know what's what's cooking in here, so... <gasps> We don't know the no. gender. No way. We figured we'd need some kind of like super exciting surprise after this madness of a year. Oh, that's exciting. I love that. I love that for me. I know you're not loving it for you, but I love it for me. <laughs> my friends are like half and half. Like half my friends feel like a personal, like I'm personally torturing them by not like finding out. And then half of them are like really pumped about it. It just makes it like it's already exciting, but it makes it even that much more exciting. I think yeah. that was a good call. I like that. <laughs> okay, let's dive in, Hillary. So we're going to start with the millennial rebranding party. How invested do you get in Kelsey's career? And I'll even say this, in Liza and Kelsey's career, because I feel like they're kind of, you know, in tandem together, if you will. Well, I, I'm obviously super invested because I feel like Kelsey's career is so important to her, and she stresses that always. Yeah. Uh, you know, as much as, like, her and Zane's, you know, love affair – um, is in the forefront often, like she's pretty career focused and pretty driven. And I feel like she's found her match uh, in that with Liza when Liza's secret came out and she could really be blazing with like all of her ideas. And she's not just like an assistant anymore, you know, like we really became a little powerhouse dream team and yeah. truly like, trusted one another. So we're for the most part on the same page when it comes to what we're doing with millennial and our vision there. And, you know, when, when one is falling off, the other one's picking up the pieces and we kind of just like work really well in tandem together. Do you have feelings about them having to let go of what they've built together? Like I E in the name, you know, I mean, or do you feel like what they're doing is still working together? No, I feel like it's a gut punch. And Eliza uh, has a better way, like an easier way of seeing that than Kelsey. Because I think Kelsey's just so desperate to break the old model, you know? I feel like sometimes Liza can see a little more into the future of what can potentially uh, uh, unfold in a different way in, tw in their benefit, you know? And Kelsey has a hard time. Kelsey still works on emotions a little bit where like she doesn't get her way or something gets taken away from her, it's like, oh my, you know, it's like, it's a personal attack. Kind of. Do you think that that's just like who Kelsey is? Or is that like a like wisdom and life experience thing? Like, is that how Liza is able to just like let it go a little bit more? I think it could be a, a, a combination of both, but also Kelsey being publisher and that being taken away. And, you know, I think a lot of blows have happened to Kelsey. So she's just a little like uneasy on her feet right now. That's true. Kelsey's definitely lost more than Liza in terms of career stuff. She's gained more, but then she, you know, but like that pedestal, the higher it is, the further you have to fall type of a thing. Well, Kelsey's journey has been full of ups and downs professionally and personally. Looking back at it from where she is now, how do you think she's grown over the years? Like significantly, is she kind of the same? Oh my gosh. I think she's grown so much. Definitely career wise, you know, she still has a lot of tumbles, but um, she's She's grown a lot and I think she's taken a lot of risks, you know, and she's, she's smart as a whip, man. I'm like, yeah. I'm so inspired by her and then, not so much in relationships. I think she still struggles with that, but she's young. And I think in New York, you know, a lot of people put their, their careers first and they don't tend to settle down until like a little bit later. And so if her, if her relationships seem immature, they are, you know, she accepts being mistreated a little bit, but maybe she also mistreats. What's interesting about the show is we, we've never really explored her family life yeah. and what her upbringing, like a little bit that she was raised by her single mom, um, but like we've never met her parents. We don't exactly know what that looks like. So I always try to apply that when she makes choices that I am like, I want to strangle you, come on. <laughs> you fell into this trap before, what are you doing, you know? 
but I tried to apply the fact that we don't know a lot about her past and why maybe that's a, a struggle or, you know, a little bit of an immaturity. Well, speaking of relationships, at the end of the episode, we see Liza might be making a connection with Kai, this hot surfer. How do you feel when Liza is possibly going to be dating somebody who's not Josh or Charles, like at this point, right? I think secretly, um, well, I know that I know that Li like Kelsey just wants Liza to be happy, right. but I kind of like myself. She's a little bit team Josh for her. Yeah, and, I agree. But you know, Kelsey's also really free in that way of like, she's probably had her fair share of one night stands that she doesn't remember. You know, like. She's a bit <laughs> right. of a <laughs> and uh, I think she, I think she's really eager to kind of push her in the direction of like, go try something new. You've been in this little like web. And I think, I think she thinks it's really fucked up that, um, that Quinn and Charles are starting to have a thing, you know? And yeah. That, and I think Kelsey's actually one of the first to start acknowledging that, that that's happening yeah. right under her nose. It would be a really hard dynamic in a workplace. Right. I know. Like, it, Charles really want to punch Liza, huh? Not only did he just like, he was so rigid, but now with now with Quinn, rebounding with Quinn, I don't know. He's kind of uh, in timeout for me right now. I'm pissed at him. Well, I'm telling you, I'm always mad at him. <laughs> but it's fun, because, it's fun because Kelsey has the utmost respect for him in business. Right, right. So it goes to that same line of like, he doesn't, he always is self-serving for himself. You know, his timing and all of that stuff. Um, but he, but I think she is so appreciative for the, the opportunity that she's had in him and she does respect him, you know, in the, in the workplace. So, um, also in this episode, Kelsey had a very strong reaction to hearing about Zane's new publisher gig. Understandably so. <laughs> the scene where you guys are in the wine vault screaming, were yeah. you and Sutton actually really screaming in that scene? Oh my God, fully. My throat hurt for days after that. We screamed so hard. And it was actually a fun. huge relief. It was so fun. But um, we seemed as loud as we could. Yeah. Well, one, he jumped her over FaceTime. Yeah. And I think she finally knows, like, that's the end. She's tired of the games that they play and the, co the competition that they constantly have. And she's gotten her feet knocked out from under her again. You know, like, she just lost her publishing position. It was always hard for him that she was the publisher there. And right. Publisher of a, a a a publishing house is way less complicated and probably doing way better than hers. So she's just like steam out tears, you know. Also, there's probably part of her that's like, well, if he had gotten this gig before, then maybe it wouldn't be over between the two of you, right? You know. I didn't think about it like that, but absolutely. And I think she knows she's better than him. Like her eye for books and the yep. risk that she takes. Like it's she thinks outside of the box and he doesn't. So she's just. And then for Redmond to be the one to tell her, I think also, also adds the adds to the frustration. Is there anything in real life that made you scream your head off? And like if like if you had anything in your life, what would it be that you could go into a soundproof vault and just like scream bloody murder? I'd much rather like pour a glass of wine, girl. Which, girl, same. <laughs> that, that that usually does the trick for me. It takes a lot for me to yell at my kids, but every time I do. My husband just starts laughing and he's like, I'm so proud. I'm so proud. That's cute, Ba. He calls me Ba. He's like, that's really cute, Ba. And I'm like, I'm so mad right now. I'm, I'm freaking out. I'm really frustrated. I'm mad at all of you. And I'm just like, oh, that's funny and cute. Like, so I, I, I definitely have an edge where like, if I need to handle shit, I can, but it doesn't, it's not usually like me screaming. That's right. Like, it's just like. Or Kelsey, you know, like she has a lot of these traits that I don't have that it's fun to step into that for a second. Walking into a soundproof room and screaming is like not Hillary style, but that's a Kelseyism. And so it's fun to get that out of your system. Yes, absolutely. I would say little things build up on me more than big things. Like bigger things I like stew on and have a hard and take a long time to like solve. But like chalk oh. or like my kids in the back of the car, freaking out when there's traffic and there's like literally nothing I can do. I'm like, when I'm <laughs> them and like, you know, people drive like shit in LA and you're just like, Ugh. but that's what the wine does. Like, you know, I get home, I get to have a glass of wine and then that's over. But then it's like, right. 
homework, this, that, you know, all the, all the other things, but I'm really not like a huge, huge screamer like that. Also in this episode, Lauren is channeling Diana. It's so fun to watch. How much fun was it to shoot scenes with Molly like that? Um, well, first of all, you know, Molly and I are tight, tight, tight. She's become oh, yeah. one of my friends. Um, in this whole entire world, she actually um, married Matt and I right before quarantine happened. We I have- know. It's so lovely. I, I like. I, I'm sad that we live in different cities, but um, it's so lovely to have her on set so much, you know. And yeah. and in this new version of what filming looks like, um, I'm really happy to have have her there all the time. So it's nice to have her in the workplace. Um, and I think it's really frustrating for for Kelsey because it's just Lauren's. Even though she's her best friend, she's a lot always. She's a lot always. Friend. Yeah, and. Yeah. Kelsey is like, don't walk in here and act like this is yours. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yes, you, know? you kind of just answered this, but you and Molly have developed like such a close friendship on screen and off screen. So how has that developed over the years? Like, was it like instant, just chemistry, friendship, or was there like, like an d- identifying moment? You know, Molly is so sweet and she always will like give me credit uh, for this. On the first day that she, so we shot the pilot. We didn't keep in touch in between. Like she really was like a day player on the pilot. Yeah. And um, I think it was one of her first like, sag jobs like big jobs you know um but she like i mean you can watch this show and know how talented it she is and amazing and i always tease her that from i always tease her about this but she went to yale she's like has like a pedigree you know she's fancy yeah <laughs> but not like not from her upbringing or anything like she totally got herself there like a very very impressive story anyway um so when we when we got picked up and we started shooting the actual show she had to do a take in um I think it was in Bryant Park and you know how busy it is and she has to do this thing where she has no shirt on and it's like free the nipple I remember that yes 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 yeah it was Bryant Park for sure and there was like paparazzi and blah 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 and I'm like hey like we got to get her some coverage in between tapes. <laughs> And, you know, and she was t- totally nervous and like freaking out. And so I just like stood up for her. And I think she's just feeling so new and not like she was very regular, like she was just trying to keep it together, and but not speak up and be a, be a team player or whatever. So like from that day, she was just like, you stepped up for me. And, um, and I think that's when our friendship started, but it really did. It took a few years for us to be like super homies. I, you guys are, you're cute together. Your friendship is adorable. I love, like, I love watching you guys. It's- We learn a lot it, from each other, honestly, in real life. You know, she has, she has a lot of things that she teaches me. I'm obviously a super submersed in like motherhood when I'm not working. Um, so, you know, I, I think she learns a lot from that, but I, I learn a lot from, from her. And um, it's just a, it's a really open, clean, like loving, accepting friendship. As it should be, right? That's that's the way friendship should be. It's like, it's a, it's a cherry on top. It's the icing on the cake. It's like all the good stuff, you know? Ooh, I wonder who that could be. Hey, it's one of the writers of this episode, Dottie Zicklin, here to answer all the questions we have about Younger. Hi, Dottie. Thank you so much for joining the show. Hi, Taylor. Hi, Hillary. Hi, Dottie. Okay, so Dottie, you're an OG who's been part of the Younger Writers Room, helping to shape the journey of these characters from the very beginning. Um, What do you hope to accomplish with the story in this final season? Well, you know, this final season is, I think our main aim was to have everyone have a satisfying happy ending i think we all love these characters we've so you know little kelsey and liza and lauren and we want everyone to end up with a happy or satisfying ending so but we want to have integrity as we tell that story and the other thing that was really important to us and we were talking about this with darren was this started with liza telling a lie in order to reinvent herself and Every season, someone's gotten over the lie. First it was Josh, and then it was Kelsey, and then it was Charles, and then it was Diana, but everyone sort of accepted the lie, and she's been able to make her way. And we just thought at at the end of this series, 
can you really lie? Can you really falsify mm. who you are and get ahead? Does it work? So we thought, especially in the current climate right now, where we're all, are we making up facts? Are, is there truth? Is there not? It was important to us to really think about that and honor that in a way that we felt good about. So that's coming up. In this episode in particular, Quinn pitches a book, it's called The F Word, um, and it's all about embracing failure. And this, the thing with the writer's daughter, you guys always seem to like, you're almost like ahead of what's about to happen in the world. You're always like super relevant, super timely, super relatable. So my question to you is, why do you think that we all need to be encouraged to accept um, or being able to rather embrace failure right now? Well, I think we all need to embrace failure, but I think women in particular need to embrace failure. It's part of the process of learning and growing. And a lot of men that I see, they don't apologize for it. They mess up. They're like, eh, I mess up, move on. And women yeah. are often saying, oh, I'm sorry, before they even let themselves have a big failure. So this, we, we really want to talk about, just let yourself have a big fail. It's how you learn. It's how you grow. And so really particularly important for women. Yeah, it's so true. Guys fail. They don't even know that they fail when they fail. They think they won when they fail. (laughs) Um, Speaking of guys, so Josh in this episode has to be very diplomatic about um, a face tattoo. I have to ask you, though, how do you feel about the face tattoo thing? Because it was a part of the storyline, which I thought was very interesting. Face tattoo, right. Face tattoo. You know, as, as a mom... I would say to my 17 year old son, no face fat. That, that's a fail. That's an F word that you don't want is the, is the face tattoo, the tattoo. But I do feel like, you know, if you're not hurting anyone and you're not hating anyone and you want a tattoo on your face, go for it. You know? <laughs> yeah. I feel like again, though, you guys, the writers, you're always like, I feel like I just watched a documentary about a rapper and he like got a face tattoo to kind of like force himself into the game and say like, no turning around, no other options. Face tattoo was like his commitment to his dreams and it worked. So you guys are just always very, you guys are always at the heart of like pop culture, even you can, and you're writing it before these things even come out. It's unbelievable. So Hillary, like when you guys get the scripts and you're reading these storylines and then you see like real world overlap, does it blow your mind at how like prophetic they are? I mean, they're, they're, they're prophets. They're like predicting the future. I know it's kind of amazing. Um, but they do that with, even just within our little small world of our show, they still blow our minds. We're still surprised by like everything we read. And then when it ties into like current events, I think we all just feel really proud of them. We're like, oh, hell yeah, you guys freaking nailed that topic, you know? And there's always like a lesson to be learned. Um, Or, you know, I learn things all the time. I can't think of something off the top of my head, but um, I learn from their writing and uh, I get interested in things from their writing. Um, My son still won't stop talking about the Fatberg. (laughs) (laughs) We've gone down the Google road of Fatberg so many times. And it still lives on. So um, there's much more profound uh, learnings from this show and our writers than that. But that's one that really stuck around in the household. <laughs> Amazing. Um, okay, Hillary, it's your turn to ask anything you want to know. I know you guys always want to get in that writer room and pick their brains. So you get one question for Dottie. So choose wisely. I guess I want to know how you guys all agree on. I mean, you can't always agree, right? There's got to, people have got to have really strong feelings about what they want. How do you agree upon and how long does it take, like where the season is going? And is it like a massive debate? Massive debates. Um, Yeah, there's eight of us. And sometimes we all eight of us agree instantly. Like that is a great idea. And those things usually write really quickly too. They're, they're like, oh, that, that's obvious. And that, that has to happen. But when you write, you don't want to be too obvious but it feels natural and earned and great. But then there are things, oh my gosh, we have, you know, we definitely pick sides on. We definitely, you know, we have team Josh, we have team Charles, we have uh, a lot of times Darren will, will have little secret ballots. So what, oh. what we go around the room and it's just like, do you want Liza to go to New Jersey or not go to New Jersey? Let's say that would be what, and we'll all 
just anonymously give our feedback and then we get a tally. Wow. Yeah, 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 we get a tally. But Darren will still do whatever Darren wants. He's the final set, <laughs> obviously, you know? I think me and Allison have had really serious disagreements because we care about the character so much, yeah. but it's generational. You know, which is kind of the conversation of our show too. So, because I'm thinking like, it's so obvious to me that it goes this way. And especially about love and marriage, honestly. Like, you know how Liza didn't want to get married and Charles did? I'm old school. I get like, to me, when I was growing up, if somebody didn't want to marry you, they just weren't that into you. I mean, that's that was the bottom line of what it was. And, you know, Allison's enlightening me that, you know, it's not like that anymore. You know, it's it, people make different choices and, and, and you can be committed and not married. And, you know, to really see Liza's side of this, she's been married. She knows what that is. And also all of a sudden, Charles decided he wanted to be married. So she had to make the decision like that and hop to it and do it. And so it was a, that decision of whether they should get married or not. I thought that was a real push pull with everyone in the room. But particularly, I felt like Allison and I had different points of view on that. And I loved learning from her. Dottie, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it so much. Thank you. Dottie, miss you. I miss you too, Hill. I'll see you soon. That stuff is so good this year. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. We love it too. We were in a heat. We just... Yeah. It's a good send off, right? Yeah. yeah. Strong. All right. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It's like, I want to know, but I don't want to know. You know what I mean? <laughs> I almost feel like sad that I know, you know, cause I know it's over now. I'm jealous that, you know, but I'm also, I, I'm like, they're probably jealous. I don't know. You know what my, I'm saying? I am. And my husband, like once I knew we got the scripts literally 10 minutes before the table read. So I didn't really, I, I flipped through to my stuff when I saw my name on the page, just so I could read somewhat decently. And, right. um, but I didn't know about all the other stuff. So I was like watching it un unfurl and I'm like, oh my God. And I came downstairs and I was like in tears and I was like, I have to tell someone. And my husband was like, no, no, I don't want to know. I don't want like, like running from me. And I'm like, I'm going to tell you. And he's like, no, like he's so, he's like. No. So did you tell him? No, he wouldn't let me. Oh my God. No, the ending is so great. I can't wait. I'm like, I can wait. I'm so sad. I don't want to come, but like, I am just so curious to see where the season goes. So throughout this final season of Younger, we're actually going to spend a little time in each episode of Getting Younger to take a look back and appreciate how far we've all come together. So Liza and Kelsey blowing off steam by literally screaming together in tonight's episode kind of feels like a natural evolution of this unforgettable scene from season two. No, no, no. I can't go back out there. Those comments. Oh, those comments are just comments from anonymous assholes. I believe those assholes. Kelsey Peters, WT, Epping F. Good question. I'm not qualified to run an imprint. I I wrote my speech on my hand and just sweated it off, okay? I this is a job for an adult. I I'm a kitten in a Barbie car. Okay, breathe in through your nose. Okay. Out through your mouth. Just focus on that. I feel like such an imposter. So do I. Every single day. No, seriously. Like, I have no idea what I'm doing. Kelsey, nobody knows what they're doing. You just fake it till you make it. And hope that when you're down, like literally on the ground in some <laughs> cases, you have people around you to help you get up. Now well, come on, if we're gonna run the world before we're 30, we gotta get moving. Oh, I love it. Okay, Hillary, reaction, first gut reaction to that scene, and then what was your favorite scene you've ever done with Liza? That's so hard to choose. I can't I'm sorry. even choose all the ones that we've that we've done like that. That was like at the beginning of like there was a role reversal happening there because Liza came into the um the office knew and totally terrified that people were going to find her out and insecure and not knowing her place. And I was like, listen, I'm the cool girl here and I'm going to take you under my wing and I'm going to show you this and that and this. And then, you know, and then 
she starts to feel like an imposter. She's like wearing this thing that she doesn't that her friend put her in and 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 this you know big event happens and she's outed online and she's having to like read things about herself, which has now happened like multiple times in the show to Kelsey. Yeah. Uh, and and I think again that speaks to the writers doing things that are super relevant, like this cancel culture, reading comments and this like cyberbullying. Um, it's so hard to navigate and it's so real and we're all human beings that have to feel it. I think people forget that sometimes, right? Oof, hey. I think that that's like one of the biggest, one of the first moments where they, they like, they realize how much they need each other and they needed each right. other missing from the other's life. So, um, that, that just keeps happening throughout the se- the seasons. And, um, you know, we always talk about this, but like the love stories are so important and they're so juicy, but really the love story is between Kelsey and Liza. Um, okay, Hillary, it's time for a round of show us your stuff. It's a segment we have on the show now because we're literally in your homes with you, which is like crazy cool. So um, we want you to show us a meaningful item that you have in your home that you wouldn't mind sharing with us. Oh my God. <laughs> Um, she's I, like, what is it? Your dog? <laughs> yeah. Hold up the puff. Oh my dog. God. What's the name? His name is Momo. Oh, Momo. You're so cute. Yes, I actually got him two seasons ago. He's a chug. He's a um, pug chihuahua. Oh, what a mix. And he has a really cool underbite. If you can see, um, oh, yeah. look at that sexy boy. Yeah. Oh my God. I like that. That was a good show and tell. Hillary, before I let you go, I have one more question. One word and only one word. What would you say describes uh, what's in store for Kelsey this season? New opportunity. Okay. New horizon. Ooh. Okay. I don't want to know anymore. <laughs> I get like excited and then immediately nervous because I think I would be able to figure it out in my head. But okay. usually I'm wrong. The writers always, they always pull something that out of their hats that I was like never, ever, ever I even thinking of. I know, me too. Hillary, thank you so much for taking the time to join me. And it was so good to talk to you and see your face. And I'm just like, I'm just so happy you're here. So thank you so much. Of course, of course. I know it, it feels different, but it feels familiar at the same time. And I love... I love recapping the show with you and I love seeing your face and um, thanks for having me. Thanks so much, sweetie. And you guys, uh, that's it for us right now. I'm Taylor Strecker and this is Getting Younger. Join me again right here after next week's episode for more behind the scenes stories and insights from the cast. Until then, here's a sneak peek of what's to come. Hey, I just want to remind you I'm leaving early today for Montauk. Oh, right. I right, come in. There is something here, right? I'm worried we literally just judged a book by its cover. So will readers, and we'll get the content. Good morning. Um, I was just going over the budget. You spent 400,000 on the Kai Manning book? It's part of my discretionary fund. I, I didn't think I needed to run that by you. No, but we do have to get approval for everything over 250,000 from Chicago, so. I am going to have to go to bat for you on this, and I am worried that we don't have anything beyond that cover. Well, covers are what sell books, and I'm really not worried about it at all. And I'm going to Montauk today to spend some time with Kai. I'll make sure we have something to show Chicago. Okay. Um, you probably want to leave early. The traffic can get really bad. Yeah, I remember. <laughs>